Hi. Hello. And welcome to another installment of The Story Bazaar from your boys at Wonderful. It's me, your host today, Kyle. Hello. How are you? I hope you're tucked in. I see. I'm Jeremy. If you. I, hey just, man, I had a whole thing. I was gonna do a whole. I got a whole intro oh, no, that I just came up on, no, on the spot. No, run it back. I'm, I'm gonna introduce. I'm gonna introduce my other or my other guests here, starting with Tyler. Hey, I've hey. seen this man. I've seen this man eat an entire live pig. He unhinged his jaw and spit out the bones. Swallowed it. Was it whole. quite impressive. He swallowed it whole, spit out the bones. They were steaming when they came out. It was very mm. strange. And then right right underneath Tyler in the Discord, we've got Matt. Hello. That man's calves. <laughs> have you seen them? No, of course not. This is an audio medium, you fool. But I have. <laughs> They're good. He can shatter diamonds between his very calf and thigh just by mm. doing a little squatsy do. Mm. It's pretty impressive. It I'm uncomfortable like with the energy we've brought to the studio. Today. And, then, <laughs> and then the final, and then finally, last but not least, right next to him in the Discord oh, call is, is our sweet, sweet boy, Jeremy. He's very sick. Am I, I don't feel <laughs> what's funny? What's funny in the episode that came out today while I was editing last night, I forgot Jeremy was like super sick that day. So I had to edit him. Edit, I had to edit him out coughing like the whole episode. <laughs> Jeremy's incredible talent is that he can have and houses all diseases. Mm. <laughs> all known diseases are within this man. He's like Bubble Boy. And welcome to this story oh, bizarre. Story. I was trying to get a little bizarre, if you if you could tell, you know, with the theme, because it's going to be a little different today. We're not playing your typical Dungeon Gregum. We're playing. <laughs> we're playing a new game. We're not playing Dungeons and Dragons. I'm so sorry. I'm a little nervous, but I had to bring my own flair to it. And by that I mean I've brought a new game to kind of be a sort of precursor to the D and D game that we will be playing later. Uh, on this is going to be a multi-part situation so it's not just a little one-off but this is to kind of inform a little something something the game that we're going to be playing today is called the ground itself it's by everest pipkin which is the coolest name i've ever heard it's a tabletop world building rpg game that's about places and i'm gonna get into it i've sent the boys the pdf i'm not gonna waste any more of your time we got the introduction here it says this game is about places over time think about places that you've been that have been important to you like your childhood fort that's under a rose bush, or maybe your first apartment, the one with the view, or the town your grandmother spent her last few years. Or think about places that have been or will be important to others. A city-state in revolt, an ant colony, a generation ship 500 centuries into its voyage towards another star. Although there may be times during the game when we are compelled to widen or narrow our focus, this is not possible for us. The story we are building is about this place, this field, this start, this city, this tree, this crossroads. No matter how we feel about our characters, if they leave our frame, we may not follow. Our camera is anchored to our place and we may not pivot or stray. Remember that places have memory, that what has happened here is always, in some small or big way, written into the walls, the stones, or the future of the people who continue to live here. Fundamentally, this, game, this is a game about the echoes and traces we leave for others after we are gone. Very cool. Oh, wow. That's some cool shit right yeah, there. Sorry cool. about my listexia, you know? That's good writing. Yes, 100%. It just It kind of sets the tone for like, it's not so much like it's like serious, but there's a gravity to it. You know, yep. there's this sort of this sort of like we're, 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 we're making something happen. So I'm going to skip a little bit ahead. We've got a little game room here set up with all the things we're going to need. No, I do have a sort of thing to kind of get us like sort of the idea of where this is going to all take place within this game. Uh, so a war that would have a cool name if I could think of one. Still couldn't think of a name for this war <laughs> on Solitaire. <laughs> With the burgeoning races of man who stepped on tradition and the sacred on their way to progress, grew the ire of the native races, and a feud ensued. There was a tenuous peace after years of bloodshed on Celeterra, and it would be changed forever. In their hubris, 
The leaders of the realms of man devised the weapon, the Dawn Spear, a twisted instrument of metal, magic, and malice capable of reducing armies to ash, raising cities, and fouling the earth, making it near impossible for life to be sustained. The leaders of man sought to use the Dawn Spear as an attempt to intimidate the world into leaving them to their own affairs. But, but you remember that hubris I was talking about? Well, word got out and a band of heroes, adventurers, or some other third thing, you'd probably call them martyrs, took it upon themselves to make a one-way trip to the human city to stop the plot and destroy the weapon before its completion. In doing so, they succeeded, but at what cost? The means by which the Dawn Spear was created contained dark and chaotic magics. In sabotaging this great weapon, it set it off in the heart of the human city, destroying it as well as spreading its terrible magics across the surface of Zelotera, slowly distorting the surface and changing many people and creatures in strange and twisted ways, as well as what seems to the people of Zelotera to have angered the very suns themselves two blazing stars that align once a month over the surface of Celeterra and ravages it with intense heat and waves of pure magic. Prolonged exposure to, this, uh, to these rays could cause one to become petrified and then turn to ash. Hmm. So basically, the sun's a deadly laser. Celeterra is kind of unlivable on the surface, and the peoples who did survive this calamity are now moving their way to the underground. And that's the title. Oh. And that's where we're going to be basically using the ground itself to sort of set up our setting for what the underground looks like for these people. What should they be expecting mm -hmm. when they get when they step foot in the underground? Because they haven't done it yet. So this mm -hmm. is what they basically would be seeing and what they would be learning about as they're progressing. So we're kind of playing... Playing like the immigrating peoples We're of playing the this forerunners. land. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The forefathers of like this new sort of like yeah. venture into the underground. And so we're going to be building out this world with the mechanics of the ground itself mm -hmm. to sort of flesh it out and give ourselves a little bit of like deeper insight before we get into the actual game as to like what we should be expecting and like things like that. But yeah, I'm ready to get into it if you guys are ready. Let's do it. The thing I was gonna say, I I feel like mm -hmm. if we're rebuilding civilization, I feel like it should be like in years, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. just because I feel like that's a good number to where it's like days wouldn't be helpful, and a millennia isn't the story mm -hmm. we're telling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. I'd still want people who lived on the surface to be around, uh, even if they're old. You know what I mean? I think years yeah, or no, decades. Definitely. I think I think that works. I think I think we could go with years for now, and then we'll roll and see. Maybe cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're 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 leading this. This is yeah, your world. No, I, I, but this is collaborative as well. So I'm trying yeah. to keep it to that mm -hmm. level of like it's not yeah. like I'm the DM right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I'm. So. I mostly agree in that millennia and centuries doesn't really make sense for the story we're trying to tell. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So we're gonna go around in circles now and mm -hmm. flip are face cards that have already dealt out and okay. they and the corresponding face card to the suit will be the question that each person asks. I think we'll start from the top with you, Tyler. Go okay. ahead and flip your first face card and pick the question that it is attached to. I've got the Jack of Clubs, which is the first one listed in the book. That's uh, so funny, not planned at the all. The question is, what was this place in the past? How long ago was that? So Ooh, okay. it, 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 it we're talking about the underground currently mm -hmm. so i think so we're I'm, am i to presume we're in the first year of yeah this would down? be like things aren't intense but they've like this is like after sort of like the evacuation of like everything yeah. after the bomb went off or the weapon went off and oh, yeah. uh, people are like starting to see the rolling effects and trying to move underground so basically what i'm getting from that then is that w the people migrating down underground are mm -hmm. s essentially being met with what was already there, right? Um, which what right. I think would already be there in this world. Uh, just to make sure I'm understanding this game, this is like the quiet year, and that like I'm just making shit up, and this is becoming yes, the canon. Yes, one hundred percent. No, there's very... correct answers. You were given a textbook a week ago. Um... <laughs> so basically, right, right here, kind of in establishing our place, they kind of talk about it. You want to keep it kind of brief. You don't need to be as super detailed. Yeah. You can like if if you want to be like. When they got there, there were monsters. You could be yeah. as vague as that, but like you don't need to be like there was Gripnor, the the, yeah. the wise, and he brought down the scepter of tools. So, uh, so what I will say then, 
I think um, what exists in the underground is not uh, not super sparse. I think there are uh, peoples who already did make their home in the underground, be it mm-hmm. uh, goblins or um, dark elves. There, I think there are uh, races. It doesn't have to be those specifically. Just no, I think yeah, there I are mean, sm- some civilizations down there, so there are places to go. Uh, but I think those places will immediately be filled out and i think to answer the secondary question of how long it's been there i think it's been it seemingly has been there as long as the people have been on the surface from right from what we could tell mm-hmm. yeah okay you know that, that definitely makes sense that people would already have like mm-hmm. made a life out of that whether it's like for the sake of like spelunking or whatever mm-hmm. like yeah. any sort of purpose for being down there that's a, that's a good one okay go now over to jado jeremy all right, so we got the Jack of Diamonds. What is this place's name, or what is it called? Who named it, and for what reason? Mm. Okay, so That's a good one. I think it's called the uh, Never Ending Darkness because Ooh. unless you like actively do some kind of thing, like bring torches or whatever, mm-hmm. it is pitch black almost everywhere. Like there is. There is no light. That's a, that's the reason it's such a great place to hide during this apocalypse, because there is no like other than mm-hmm. the ways to get in. There's no way there's no light coming in from outside. I like the idea that no one's actually ever been able to confirm it 100 uh, percent because there was never really a need. But like I like the idea of this place. There are entrance to it all over the world. So right. like mm. we I like that a lot. Other than the fact that. Everyone know everyone like there are people who live down there. Like it's still mm-hmm. hugely unexplored. Right. Uh, yeah. So I think it's kind of gotten the moniker that like uh, it's actually mm-hmm. infinite. You know. So mm-hmm. it's this never ending. That's interesting. Darkness. I like that a lot. Like it's suspected to be. So so who named it? Yeah. Now I actually that, don't. I, I, I yeah. take that, that that could be a person or a group of people. Yeah. Or... Yeah. I think it's just culturally developed this name because like even before the apocalypse happened. Uh, the, like there were people who went and explored it and like there still aren't like full map, like not even close to full maps. Like they've done enough mm-hmm. maps to know that there's so much more that they haven't gone to. Interesting. Uh, I like that. I like yeah. that as well. I like that a lot. I shall flip my card. You've activated my drop card. Ooh, Ooh King the of King of Oz. It's the heart of the cards, would you say? <laughs> the king of games? <laughs> you couldn't make it five um, minutes so... into this fucking game without a Yu-Gi-Oh! reference. <laughs> yes. What stories are told in or about this place? Does it have legends or myths? Uh, does it have religion? Dude, um, these, are ooh, really these are great questions. I got yeah, like yeah. A, a couple of questions here. So I almost want to say this is like a like a cautionary, like, you know, like, oh, like, don't be bad or we'll send you to the never ending darkness. You know, like it's kind <laughs> of like this place that like, mm-hmm. ironically like it started out becomes, as like a fun little yeah. like that's a thing to tell your kids. And now we're mm-hmm. actually yeah. all as a people's having to go having to the to never be there. Yes. yes. So that's so good. It's, it's very ironic that it's like the salvation uh, mm-hmm. of like uh, humanity essentially. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Um, so I, I really uh, like the idea of that. Like, you know, it was maybe like a little bit like before it was very, before everything happened, it was very like frowned upon to be there, I would say. Yeah. Um, oh, and then, and then, um, does it have any legends or myths? I mean, do you mean frowned upon whole... by like specific cultures or societies yeah, like, or specific like everyone? Or like, yeah, specific cultures, I would yeah. say. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, uh, so then, uh, yeah. just out of just, uh, I'm not sure if this is necessarily how the game works mechanically, mm-hmm. but like, were there entire cultures that got wiped out because they refused to go into the darkness then? So, presumably, with mm-hmm. kind of like the intro thing that I gave you guys, mm-hmm. like humans are going to be very rare in this mm-hmm. world because, right. like, their home city, not that like all humans would yeah. be in the mm-hmm. home city at the time of that happening, but like yeah. their home city got destroyed. Like, the home, yeah. the home yeah. city of the humans, like, I don't yeah. have a name for it because it's just yeah. off the map. They, they were the like central point of the magical, like, mm-hmm. devastation. Yeah. So, like, it makes yeah. sense that they get hit the most. Yeah. Yeah. People uh, people suspect that some of the maybe like bad people 
you know, I guess mm-hmm. bad humans that would have made this terrible mm-hmm. weapon would be in that lump sum mm-hmm. are escaping to hide out in the caves of the mm-hmm. of the endless of the never ending mm-hmm. darkness. Like, Got it. so that kind of fits into that vibe of like, it's not a bad place, but it's like a yeah, you don't know what's down there. It could yeah. be bad. It yeah. could be anything. Yeah, expect it's almost, the worst. Hope it's for the just best a scare kinda. tactic. Oh, it's almost so like, it feels like I kind of like that. So is it literally a thing where it's like? The, the world knows so little about this place that it hasn't even developed myths and legends because it's no, right it doesn't now. know enough <laughs> yeah. to yeah. even come up with them. Yeah. That's for for yeah. this moment, you know, because we still have yeah. to go through a couple more. But, oh, uh, yeah, no, we'll have right. some shit develop. And then now, I guess it's my turn. Ooh, I've got the Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts. Who or what a person, landmark, or society has been in this place the long... Ooh, I didn't plan okay. any of these. This yeah, is so great. This <laughs> works out so well. I have a so feeling another I know. Thing, another thing I'm introducing into this world is a race that I created called the Booglin. They're like an hey. insect folk sort of race. Uh, I think they absolutely have to be the people who have been here the longest. Like, uh-huh. the, like, like a lot mm-hmm. of these naturally carved tunnels and stuff are old abandoned hives where the Boogland yeah. have moved and changed things for any number of reasons. I don't have to detail it too, too well, but like, yeah, along with the few races of the upper side that came down here and established their own sort of colonies, when they got here, they noticed, oh shit, the Boogland. And I think like the only way you would know that they are down there is like their hive-like sort of like cities. They look mm-hmm. like it yeah. sort of looks like lichen or like mm-hmm. moss growing on rocks mm-hmm. and like it, they kind of lead into these different tunnels and like nooks and crannies. And like the only way you could tell you're near it is because it's bioluminescent. Mm-hmm. Like oh, they cool. glow. It gives off a sort yeah. of like pink dull hue to their nesting area. And so mm-hmm. like that's like one very dim light source that is around that you could use to kind of get around if you knew what it was. And uh, yeah, they sort of keep to themselves. They haven't really bothered with anything they've they're very aware of the migration of surface dwellers to the underground because they've been here long enough to kind of sort of sense it in a way Mm -hmm. and so like they're not necessarily interfering in one way or the other they're just observing i think they just like they saw them here and they didn't necessarily welcome or shun them away they're just like ah well neighbors (laughs) you know (laughs) Uh, so i have uh, again you can stop me if this is not how a game works but just to expand a little bit about the booglins so mm-hmm. it sounds like they've always been down here. Like this is literally where they're from. I is that I don't think that or... that origin is quite accurate. Okay, I would say I don't think no one. I don't think they've always been down here, but they've been down here for a long enough yeah. time that it seems as though and they've then, been here. Did the people from the surface know they were down here before they actually came down here? Probably not. Okay, they did not make them. They're not a very like social sort of sect. Like their hive yeah. mind mentality sort of keeps them sort of like, hey, we've got a job to do and you kind of know what it is because you know what I know, you know? Like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So Not this so is much the- that they don't have any uh, uh, like solo goals or anything like that. Like there's yeah. individuals mm-hmm. that have gone out and adventured, but they still are connected to their home nest and their home brood mother and stuff right. like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sweet. Or boog mother, sorry. Boog mother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jack of hearts. All Let's right. See. Oh, there's two options. Who lives here? What is an average person like in this place? What do they look like? What do they wear? Or describe the flora and fauna. What is the landscape like? What animals and plants call it home? Uh, I think I want to go with the second one. Okay. Um, what kind so, of animals we got? Um, so I think that it obviously depends on where in the world you are. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's varieties like, uh, like you said, Kyle, with, uh, there's lots of, um, biolum- bioluminescent fungus in certain areas where the, mm-hmm. uh, booglins call home. Um, yeah. I think you get lots of your, uh, usual suspects like bats and rats and, um, bugs, centipedes, cockroaches, all those kinds mm-hmm. of things. Um, I think you, yeah, I think you also probably get a good bit of other like ground, like burrowing animals, like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, like moles and muskrats and gophers and and those sorts of things. The deeper you go, I think you get more like, uh, reptilian, like, uh, kind of creepier, maybe some weird, like yucky, (laughs) uh, yucky reptiles and weird fish and. Kind of mm. like when you go deeper okay. into an ocean. 
God. So Ooh. like the deeper you go, the more alien the creatures. It's, I was about to say, it's like layers almost. Like yeah. the yeah. surface level stuff is kind of tame, but as you mm-hmm. get progressively deeper within the yeah. never ending darkness, which I'm like, the more I say it, the more I'm in love with that name. It's so fucking cool. <laughs> I think the same is true for plant life as well. I think the deeper you go, the weirder it gets. I think mm-hmm. uh, nearer the surface, it, I think you're more likely to run into like some more uh, toxic things like uh like fungus and things that might be trying to protect themselves but i think mm-hmm. the deeper you go the less dangerous the the uh, flora is because they're not running into as many you know predators and things like that so the surface level you're more worried about plants whereas the deeper you yeah. go you're starting to worry about animals that's, yeah. fun. that's I fun i like that's that good. a lot because that also like implies that, that there's probably some kind of like high level you've got a lot of herbivores as you go down there's more and more carnivores Low level you got predators yeah. that are like exactly yeah. it's like kill or be killed as it's going further down that's really cool yeah which is why the plants aren't as aggressive at the bottom because like there's no herbivores can survive down here <laughs> so next up we got jeremy again go ahead and flip that card roll that beautiful okay. card footage king yeah. of club uh, spades spades, spades. <laughs> i can identify king shapes spades. <laughs> uh oh there's two questions if there are multiple people who live here what are they divided on what are the points of contention that are fought over if oh, there are shit. not multiple people what resources do the plants animals and visitors to our place vie for so i'll actually uh do the first one if there are multiple people who live here yeah. uh so uh, obviously there's not very much of any kind of government from any of the previous, like, because there were multiple kingdoms mm-hmm. and everything, but they all got destroyed. So everyone mm-hmm. kind of ended up just mixing together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think there's contention uh, between the people who are escaping down and the Booglins uh, mm-hmm. because the Booglins are very isolationist. Like most people didn't even know Booglins existed. So, like, they are very isolationist, but they're also already well established. They've got, like, this thriving civilization underground, and they also want nothing to do with these people who just (laughs) came down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I like the idea that there's this divide within the refugees who have come down and, like, a lot of people are like, we need to just aggressively take that stuff because we're going to die without it. And then the other half is like, hey, bud, the whole surface is bad now because yeah, the we reason have why. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically, like, there's this contention between the refugees and the Booglins. Mm-hmm. But then there's also contention between all the refugees of kind of how to handle, how to approach mm-hmm. the Booglins of this, like, should we be aggressive because we're desperate or right. should we do a peaceful approach? Just because, like, violence is what led us here in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that. that. I wrote I like conflict, that too. and then I wrote r- right beneath that, Boog v. Surface Dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. The King of Diamonds. Man, I'm just a king type of dude. So uh, the question is, who or what is in power here? Is it a ruler, an apex predator, um, a series of laws that govern society, or the weather? Um Ooh, this is a tough question. That is a tough question. I don't question. think that there's I don't think that there's a ruler here. I think it's so expansive that there's like there's no one true form of like government down here. Yeah. Um bartering I is think- god. <laughs> money is king money is gold money is uh money is uh god. I would say the laws are very like loose. I think it's very like hey don't kill anybody, you know, mm-hmm. please. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it's like a, it's, I think it's like a, 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 court, a court of the public. I would say everybody holds everybody accountable. Right. Um, so like if it, it, you know, if a majority of people are like, Hey, fuck this dude, because he did mm-hmm. this, um, then they fuck, they do that dude, you know, um, <laughs> they fucking gross. Yes. I mean, if this, you know, if that's the, what they decide on, I don't know. <laughs> he started yeah. referencing um, anime. Now he switched to hentai. Yeah. Yes. Um. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. And I think Not that good. makes, I think that makes na- a natural, I think that is the natural, natural progression. Sense, yeah. 
where yeah. that like there's these people can't yeah. necessarily agree to make one yeah. like yes. governing yeah. body, but they can all yeah. agree like yeah, let's not kill each other. If someone yeah. starts killing each Please. other, we're gonna we're gonna take care of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I I do think that there is a uh, also a natural fear uh, fear of all those creatures uh that we were talking about before the that are just levels. really the really Booglins are just like the people in the deep uh never yeah, ending the deep darkness. deep like animals and stuff like Can we call there's that some the crazy shit down there the yeah, deep I mean, darkness ooh, the like never, the, the layers beyond are the deep darkness the yeah, even I more like never ending I'm and that down. even more darkness <laughs> But uh, I like the idea of like the Booglins maybe being on the level just before shit gets real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As like a buffer. Like mm-hmm. they're kind of like, hey, we've lived here longer than you. We don't go down there. Don't go yeah. down there. Yeah. yeah. You know? Oh, maybe it's even yeah. like a situation where they're the reason the predators aren't above that level. Like they, as a civilization, is actively like protecting the herbivore levels and stuff. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they live in harmony with the upper levels because they've been there so long that it's like, yeah, no, we're not going to fuck this up. This is our home. Right. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Queen of Spades. That's clubs. Uh, clubs. Uh, clubs. I know. <laughs> I was testing you. I, just, I, I, I can't judge. <laughs> All right. The same issue. What, what was the greatest moment in this place's history? Ooh. An invention? A discovery? A revolution? A new sapling? An emergence of a cycle of cicadas? Huh. That's so funny That's so that it fun. ended on a bug thing. Yeah, like, you can go be wild. Any, you can come up with whatever the hell you want. In response to the like influx of people sort of coming into the underground, um, an event did happen where like one of the bigger creatures came up. Ooh. Like something massive. It didn't stay for long, mm-hmm. but it, it was recognizing the sort of like societal shift that mm-hmm. was happening. Mm-hmm. It was intelligent enough to know that there is more life happening in this mm-hmm. surface area that shouldn't have been there. Like, mm-hmm. and it saw it and just went back down. Mm-hmm. Only a handful of people maybe saw it. Mm-hmm. They don't know what it was, but something intelligent enough. Responded to the 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 sort of like commotion of everyone moving in and everything, saw the situation and just okay. sort of dipped back down mm-hmm. out of out of view. Like it's the, I, I love the spookiness and vagueness of that. Yeah, like <laughs> the Boogland couldn't stop it because they didn't even sort of detect it. I don't think mm-hmm. whatever sort of thing they yeah. used to sort of keep the guard up, mm-hmm. this thing was able to sort of avoid yeah. it entirely. Yeah. And it's it was massive. Like I can't stress enough. Yeah. This thing was huge. I, I'm not sure if I I am a little dumb or just a really established. So all this stuff we're describing that happened in either like the first little bit. Of yeah, the this was like as they in were the past. No, this so was literally as the humans were entering the underground. Somehow right. this thing knew, it, or not right. humans, but like the other races yeah, of yeah. of the surf the surface dwellers is what I wanted yeah. to keep calling. Okay, them. so this like Once huge the, event. It, is actually also the same year. It, it could. It literally sensed maybe the tremors of the feet or whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, moving yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. But it knew that something big was changing on the surface, and it yeah. wanted to. Also, see maybe it. a giant explosion. Also so what you're probably. saying that is, also that might <laughs> yeah. have also been a part of it as well. We don't. They, they don't know what sort is- of. An eldritch big bad at the at near the <laughs> we, we don't know there. that it's bad. We don't yeah. know that it's oh, bad. True, 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 we true, just true, true. know that it is observed things. Mm-hmm. I just want to say. Things. I just want to take a moment to pause to to say I love that given the nature of what we're doing, this allows us to let's say we you know record two sessions or something like that of us playing in this world. We can come mm-hmm. back to this world just whenever, whenever. we want. Literally, that was that's my whole thought. Do. I'm just I'm setting it up, and especially because of you guys, like with it being so collaborative, the mm-hmm. idea of these networking systems of sort of clusters, like mm-hmm. that's kind of what I've been calling them in my head, yeah. of like other tunnel systems and other yeah. cave sort of systems mm-hmm. that are connected to this main one that was the entrance mm-hmm. for the surface mm-hmm. dwelling peoples in this area that we're mm-hmm. kind of taking place in. There's another cluster somewhere that yeah. has nothing to do with this that is connected to this, though. You know, mm-hmm. like, okay. that's such a cool, yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, I love super that. Super interesting Kyle. shit. I, I, I think, think th- I think that is very interesting and vague. My turn. Jack of Spades. Did I get all jacks? <laughs> what are threats to this place? Are these threats to the materiality 
of the place or the people that live in it? Like, is it hmm. the physical place yes. that is in danger or is it the people? Hmm. 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 I am going to say <laughs> both. I think that there is a general sense of uncertainty of mm-hmm. what the future of this place holds, given mm-hmm. how bad they fucked it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that right now they're like, we're going down into the earth because where else are we going to fucking go? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that there are potential long-term dangers that, they are in currently should they not figure out some sort of solution to what's going on above or Mm -hmm. potentially a way to get off planet Mm -hmm. or whatever Uh, they don't have that kind of technology now just like in their heads they're like we might we might be fucked like Mm -hmm. just a general sense of uncertainty as Mm -hmm. to what sort of irreparable damage they've done yeah right and again i'm gonna apologize in advance if we're doing this wrong in any way Tell us about it. Yeah, let us know. But we're but yeah. we're doing we're but, doing it. But the I, best I we like can. the way it's going so far, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna keep playing it how I'm feeling it. So, yeah, Queen of Spades. Okay, so I got what? Uh, what was the greatest tragedy in this place's past? How is it remembered? <laughs> um, so I actually like the idea that, um, the greatest tragedy that happened in the past is actually like directly related to the fact that um, in order for the people who came down here to come down here, um, they had to abandon like all kinds of like family homes and all that kind of stuff. But even more Mm -hmm. importantly, like they had to abandon their elderly and their sick because Mm -hmm. there just wasn't time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's just this general sense of grief uh, because everyone who escaped down here left something or someone behind to oh. be destroyed. Mm. And like everyone knows that everyone else is like everyone knows that everyone else is in this situation because if they hadn't abandoned it, they wouldn't be down here alive to begin with. Yeah, they're only here oh. because they had to give up something or someone and everybody knows it yeah. everyone that's good that, that, i like uh, that yeah. a little bit of a uh, survivor's guilt no it's absolutely oh, it's definitely. survivor's guilt absolutely. for sure absolutely yeah that's right that's bad. good i got the queen of diamonds Ooh. i am with the queen of diamonds that's me <laughs> uh what is valued in this place what is it uh known to have an excess okay um oh this is a really good that question is interesting. so mm-hmm. so Honestly, I kind of like the idea of like metals not very like uh uncommon to see like a lot of gold down here like right right because they're in the earth so yeah, like right. you know so metals like, abound you know different yeah like metals stuff. abounds but like uh what is uh valued obviously I would say like probably like meat <laughs> I would say like you know like. <laughs> Meat's very valuable because um, they're f- they're mostly subsisting off that upper level of like plants. Yeah, no, that makes exactly. sense. That yeah, totally so, makes sense. Yeah, so um, so resources are a little like flipped. Like it's like food, you know, mm-hmm. it, meat and protein isn't very like you know common down here. Mm-hmm. Um, it probably has a higher price to it. Yeah, um, but like you know, what what is gold worth? I don't know. Maybe yeah. not that much. I don't yeah, know. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like all the precious metals are worthless. Cause like, yeah. And my fucking yeah. house is made of gold. Cause I was, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was easy. I just and I, carved I don't it mean out. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean, so, you know, like it's like just value value less. I would think, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, so yeah. are we saying, well, I mean, are we yeah. saying yeah. like meat is everything or are we more broadly saying like those sorts of things? So I like think, wood, I think it's, like, you know, it's you know, definitely, like, uh, it's definitely like a very nice luxury to have meat. I would yeah. say. Okay. So meat is like the so highest valuable. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think like that totally like... makes sense. <laughs> That's really idea. good, Matt. Just the I idea of meat being like literally a hot commodity. Like yeah. fuck meat your is money. King. Do yeah. you have steak? Yeah. <laughs> oh, if, is jerky currency? Can I, can I fucking amazing? I know it's not necessarily in the parlance of the game to like add on to that, but like maybe there's like special people who mm-hmm. go out and hunt meat. 
Oh no, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, oh, like yeah, I feel like yeah. because that's Hunt such me, a like, hard thing to out do in the in the caves in or the lower the levels where like oh, yeah, there's yeah, bigger yeah. game animals yeah. and stuff. Like you have yes. your upper land hunters. Like I'm sure there's like rabbity kind of things yeah. and stuff like that. And like you said, bats and rats and things. Yeah. yeah. But like, but like a good like solid that. chunk of like, like premium is meat is down in the lower yeah. levels, and oh, like yeah. special people train to go and oh, yeah. collect premium meat. I mean, mm-hmm. that right there literally is a story, <laughs> and yeah. not necessarily the one we play, but that is a story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and now it's on to me, the final card before the we final get bring us home. Card. Here we go, <laughs> King of Clubs. If there are inhabitants, what are their visions for the future that they hold? Is it a long view or a short one? Mm. I'm no planning this out on purpose, but I mean, I'm going to go back to the Booglin, I guess, because that kind of helps me kind of mm-hmm. flesh yeah. them out. They were already technically inhabitants there. I don't think they have like a a long or short view. I think their whole sort of thing is like what's good for the colony in the moment. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. what yeah. will help the colony progress into the future because like mm-hmm. – they're going to be around until maybe if they're 50, if they're not doing something dangerous or strenuous or whatever, right? So, like, right. they're just protecting – they're basically building for the longevity of their, their lineage, yeah. right? Their so whole – yeah. I guess it would be a long view maybe. A little yeah. bit they're of – They're just like, uh, it doesn't matter what I want, the greater good. Yeah. The, the, so the, 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 the good of the hive. To, yeah. to, to expound upon that then, I don't know if this is exactly what it's no, asking. absolutely. What about the people who are coming down? What is their – view of the future or uh, yeah i can also do that future. as well yeah. yeah yeah i think for them for now i think some of them hold out hope that some of the lead arcanists and scientists are going to mm-hmm. figure out a way to make the surface livable again but there's also a few people who know that that's not probably possible and so they're trying to sort of set up something new mm-hmm. that isn't in like they're not trying to forget where they came from but mm-hmm. they're trying to make it to where it's possible for kind of in the same vein of the Booglin in a way, like without even knowing it or sharing that sort of yeah. common interest, they're making do with what they have. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, they can't go back to the surface because it's such a gamble. You'll either mm-hmm. get mutated or turn to ash. That's your two yeah. options, you know? Mm-hmm. And so they, they, I think their, their longevity now is to just like try and establish a foothold down here and hopefully make yeah. things better like like see if they can't make things better for them down for themselves down here yeah so now we're going to be now we're in the first cycle once we pull a 10 we're at we're out of that first cycle onto the second and then whenever we pull gotcha. that 10 you roll a d6 and that's how many years have passed and like that's so like the other cycle was this many years mm-hmm. if that makes sense all right that's a seven what is the most beautiful thing in or about our place? Okay. I'm going to say the most beautiful thing in our place is I think if you go down to like the second layer, um, so you're not going super deep, but you're getting a whole like degree of separation. Yeah. There is an underground forest. Yeah. Ooh. Um, okay. I think there are a good bit of bioluminescent sort of, mm-hmm. uh, like mushrooms and other plants around. So it is kind of self lit. Um, Mm -hmm. And the trees are funky because they don't get sunlight. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think there is a decently sizable, uh, beautiful forest. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. I like that a lot. Would we call this forest the Underwood? (gasps) Ooh, that's That's good. Matthew, that's that's wonderful. That's very good. It's wonderful. Ah, (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) That's the we're, uh, story bizarre. I'll see right myself now. out. <laughs> Jeremy with right. a two. Yeah. Uh, name a monument, marker, statue, or other physicalized memory that exists in our place. What does it mark? I think one of the first things that the refugees did um, once they kind of got themselves not established, but uh, like a uh, time to catch a breath. Mm -hmm. Um, they built a monument in the center of the like town square. I mean, it wasn't Mm -hmm. really a proper town square at that point. It was more like a refugee camp, but I think like they basically pooled, uh, and they built this beautiful, like pristine, uh, white marble 
uh, monument to the uh, to the people who were left behind um, mm-hmm. at, as kind of like a amends. And they specifically chose like pure white marble um, so that in order for it to stay clean, everyone in the city would have to constantly like maintain it. Um, mm-hmm. And like it was kind of a it was made this pure white white uh structure as like a we weren't able to save them we have a responsibility to like mm-hmm. like an atonement yeah yeah, yeah. it's an atonement I like, that a like lot. they that, made this of... giant statue as an atonement yeah that's very mm-hmm. good that's really cool i like that is it in any particular shape or so like in in sort of mm-hmm. like because i've been in preparation for this i've been watching a lot of cave stuff like in caves as stalactites and stalagmites are formed, if they form long enough and in a precise way, they will create columns as they sort of connect. Oh, what if wow. it's like caught between two of those, like it was like sort of a natural formation and they just kind of carved it out into this sort of. Ooh, I actually, no, 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 no. I actually love that. Okay, so it's like, you know, the Washington Monument? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they basically took, so all of this is marble, but they mm-hmm. have this marble washington monument going up and down like meeting mm-hmm. each other and as yeah yeah and yeah. then in the middle of that um is i'll say like a giant gold orb mm-hmm. or like a giant polished gem mm-hmm. um but like the polished gem is only held up by these two points of these things so like perfectly pressing it together kind of exactly yeah yeah, yeah. I fully, as soon as he started saying it, I was picturing yeah. that. That's so good. That's very yeah, good. Like that. Does the monument have a name at all? Do you want to name it or do you want to leave that up to me? Uh, I think it's just called Remembrance. Ooh. Ugh. 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 Wow. That's powerful stuff. I like that. Um, so I drew An our ace. first ace. What are the plants like in our place, the rocks, and the soil? <laughs> okay, so um we kind of touched on some of this already well we touched on one place it doesn't yeah. necessarily you could even expound upon maybe the yeah. layers like if there's maybe and I, they don't say to make too many characters because mm-hmm. they can sometimes get yeah. them out but like if you want to mm-hmm. make maybe like a biologist or somebody who studies mm-hmm. the layers mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and knows a bit yeah. more about the fauna and, and flora and things like that and why yeah. it's the way it is yeah you should also think about the fact that like the environment can change like over the yeah. course of these cycles the environment so like we mm-hmm. described the initial environment mm-hmm. how did all these people coming down here affect that environment if you want to go gotcha. that direction okay gotcha. you don't have to but that's just yeah. yeah just examples as far as like plants like i mean we are mm-hmm. underground so right. like there are like some like roots and stuff that are coming through tunnels and like right. it might like you know like kind of cut off so you might have to kind of maneuver around like roots a lot of times mm-hmm. depending on how well maintained like that tunnel is mm-hmm. um maybe farming is a bit more difficult because it's so rocky yeah. down here yeah, yeah like, like is farming even possible yeah they don't tradi- they, maybe they don't do traditional farms maybe there's like fungus farms or maybe yeah. like you know something like that where they're collecting moss or like they work in a way where like yeah they have an animal that produces something down there that's like now this is the new chicken like it's like some kind of worm or something mm-hmm. and they like yeah they use the silk or eggs or it, it could be any sort of yeah yeah I, I i think that's a good point i mean obviously like the people that lived on the surface like um they're not gonna have like a whole lot of information on how to like farm down here um so they are trying to like figure out different ways to like kind of recreate you know, what they you know uh what they had up up on the surface but uh mm-hmm. they're just trying to like figure out you know how they're yeah. going to be able to do that having to learn how to utilize what mm-hmm. we got exactly oh also really quickly just so you guys know if mm-hmm. um like for example with kyle or uh, with matt just now if you feel like you don't have anything to contribute to your particular yes. question you mm-hmm. can you cannot answer oh, yeah. that question and you can do one of the other actions right yeah I, up here i can go through those again it's tell a story throw a party discover something see an omen leave the frame or move on yeah and, and there's there's, there's in there's instructions on what all those mean if yeah. you want five of what was that clubs no space well it doesn't, space. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter yeah oh, yeah. yeah my bad just the first five <laughs> what are the stars like in our place the sky, the weather. I truly do love this. I don't think it works the way 
uh, like weather works in the, sim- in the in the same way, right? I think because of the surface, maybe there's like a, there's like certain cracks and spots where like condensation is coming down from it being overly heated, and that's sort of like their rain now. Like they don't think about it like rain, but like they are keenly aware of these like stalactites or stalagmites that are like going to give off a bit more moisture. Maybe there's like Okay, so it's so instead of like weather being this thing that kind of changes in different areas, it's more like there is just permanent weather conditions in different regions. Like yes, one yes. area is always raining, but it's not actual rain. It's yeah, just- like stuff nearing the surface. That's why it grows so much plants. It kind of explains that a little bit. It's more yeah. jungly up there because of the humidity of literally the surface being cooked and all the mm-hmm. moisture that is down here evaporating, creating sort of like steam. And then the further you go down, maybe it gets a little colder or maybe it gets like... Mm-hmm. You know, it differs, I think, from layer to layer as you go down. Like, it's not so much that it is weather. It's just this is the condition of the space Mm -hmm. and life grows because X or Y, you know. Maybe it's harder to breathe as you go down. Like, maybe Mm -hmm. oxygen starts to get a little thinner or something like that. Or maybe there's natural gases that are in these lower levels that, like, they have to build some sort of breathing apparatus to kind of function and live in those spots. Like, they can. It doesn't affect Mm -hmm. them physically, but they can't breathe. Like, the animals and the flora there breathe, you know. I think it's a new challenge, but I think it's, like their weather and their day and night cycle is dictated on the way the cave sort of works. Yeah. And then uh, I think the only way they know of the day and night cycle is like, I think thematically this kind of fits to where the human site used to be in this mm-hmm. particular place that we are like focused in on. I believe that the, there is a literal sheet, a perfect like sphere sort of like mm-hmm. domed downward of glass where the city has literally been burned away by this crazy weapon. Mm -hmm. And so when the sun does move past that spot, they can see sort of light and it doesn't necessarily affect things in a way that's like, they're getting blasted by the same sort of stuff. So it's It's not even, so, so, Really, like, not even everyone has a day night cycle anymore. No, yeah, the the lower you go, the less light. Yeah. I think there's like just a certain section where that human city used to be is like the only thing that is like a light source. That mm-hmm. could technically be considered a natural light source, but it doesn't have any of the negative effects of literally being on the surface. Maybe right. there's cracks near it that like some of the light beams in. And if you get caught in that, yeah, you could get fucked up. But like, yeah, no one's really going around that because it's too scary. Like, like no mm-hmm. one, no one's really messing with it because like that's ground zero. Like you treat that with some respect, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. six. Is that our first six? Yes, it is. What is the most horrible thing in or about our place? Hmm. I think I'm going to go with through the perspective of the new, like the surface dwellers being down here. I think the most horrible thing about this place is the darkness. Yeah, that's Uh, true. No sunlight. Mm -hmm. You have to bring your own light source anytime you want to go anywhere that presumably is out of town. I would imagine the towns will develop their own light sources. Uh, I figured yeah. the town might even develop underneath that dome. Like it's just far enough away that like, they're mm-hmm. not scared of it, but it's like, yeah, it's a, the only close to natural light source we're going to have. So maybe let's mm-hmm. do that, you know? Oh, well that's actually, uh, it's, let's establish it. Cause we've been kind of talking about the refugees and all these different pockets, which pocket it, are we at? Are we at the ground zero pocket or are we I think at this is where other- it, would kind of, it, it would be near that area like it's not directly underneath i think you can se. specify elsewhere if it pertains but yeah but yeah, it's exactly. within it's encompassing the story like it's within this sort of space and story that we're talking about so like okay. it may not be directly like you look up and you see it but like you could see it in the distance or something you know got it okay but it Sweet. is a light it's like a partial light source but it's only in this surface area it's not in the lower levels you know right i got a nine nine first nine wow Ooh. all right what do people eat and drink here? What is considered mm. traditional? Um, so that's a good question. Yeah. So because this is the kind of the early stages, um, it is very much a experimentation kind of situation where mm. no most of these people haven't encountered most of these plants and most of these animals. So Uh, people are, at least at first, eating whatever doesn't immediately kill them. 
um, from yeah. eating it. Like over time, they're like kind of slowly figuring out like what plants and everything are okay to eat and stuff. Um, but in general, like people are eating and drinking whatever liquid and food they can find, uh, at least in this early situation. And Matt established earlier that meat is sort of like a sign yeah. of wealth, a sign of like right. a, you're a luxurious person if you're eating meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. And then uh, as far as what is considered traditional, I don't think there is a traditional meal yet because yeah, they have not they don't even sense. have a well-established food source yet. So having, they definitely don't have a traditional. Maybe even in this pursuit of like trying to figure out what is safe to eat, they're looking for something that they can easily grow. Get a like lot of. Something that they, could, that they could use and like maybe make even a farm closer to their home base rather than having right. to forage mm -hmm. out in the wild. Yeah. Like. Right trying to cultivate it and like see if it's mm -hmm. possible to cultivate it outside of its natural growing space. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm, yeah. I think that that's a big point of contingence with most people down here probably mm -hmm. is like establishing a reliable food source period. Yeah. yeah. So that makes some people kind of turn towards the like, I'm going to be a hunter and go hunt meat mm -hmm. and become mm -hmm. maybe that kind of person. And then there's yeah. other people who spend their whole life trying to study maybe magic or or even nature checks now yeah. i might make nature checks important in this bitch because yeah. fucking <laughs> like they really need like it's dire yeah. straits out here you know yeah. you can't mm -hmm. go around eating every root every tuber every grub you see all right matt all right yeah. let's do this Ooh, oh there it is end of an era <laughs> all right got a 10 so you may pick freely between the following questions but do not pick the same one twice okay so uh so i get to ask uh, answer one of these questions um and then after that we'll collectively decide right after the time skip i think we collectively decide which of the bottom questions to answer correct yes yes am yes. i reading this correctly okay i will say so um the gardens are planted the work has been done and now we wait what is planted i'm so and what glad you picked that one Matt. okay yes so i i wanted to read through everything just yes. to see but since food has been such a like yeah i mean the people of this world have no idea what's going on, at least right. the ones that, that, you know, migrated here and, right. and you know, escaped here. Um, so there was a huge push initially towards mm -hmm. um, figuring out what food wise is going to help them sustain. Mm -hmm. I do think that they actually made a base uh, mm -hmm. towards like a, w basically where there's the most probable chance of there being sunlight. Um okay there is a farm that they were able to build. I would say, um, they're able to, you, that is the most, like the highest, uh, valued soil, um, out of the entire, like, uh, like area. So what they did is they basically tilled that area so that they could try to plant crops mm -hmm. that they may have had in the, uh, in the past, maybe somebody grabbed some like corn or something. Got so it. they were able to reintroduce something, that yeah. they had on the top and that was like a big success for them um what i will say because of this mm -hmm. um they had to establish some sort of i would say like i don't want to say military but there is a protection around this area yeah. this is a very yeah. valuable space yeah, yeah. yeah um so uh because this is what will give everybody food and there's a lot of starving people so, so this is a new food source added to mm -hmm. a biome like correct a, it, oh like, yeah the implications mm -hmm. here matt mm -hmm. i love mm -hmm. ah. yeah mm -hmm. so um yeah. i i'm imagining this would definitely be under that glass dome right that's so exactly like immediately my thought under yes, the yes, glass yes. dome is this like heavily guarded like yes garden of traditional like food correct and stuff. yeah what's correct. the name of the farm matt i need you to cook something up for us oh hold on um it's called uh <clears throat> the garden of the goddess okay Okay, mm -hmm. Garden of the Goddess. Garden of the Goddess. That reminds me of that song, that that line in fucking Fallout Boy. In the Goddess, in the Goddess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get closed captionings on that? You is that this ain't a scene? <laughs> exactly, yes. Yes, yes. It took me a second I'm, to figure out what I'm gonna say it right now. The NPC that runs that farm is named Patrick Stump. That's just okay. a good name for a farmer. So it is. I get to roll a die, correct? Yes. Is it yes. a D a D six? A D six. Two years. So two years have passed. So that makes sense. So now all these next questions that we answer, you need to think about 
they've been down here for mm -hmm. two years. This is the third year down here. Yes. And then uh, uh, I think we have to collectively decide which of the bottom questions we want to answer. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, um, so, no. So, I, so I'm reading after every cycle. We answer all three of those questions. Wait, oh. what? We answer all three of those questions after each oh, cycle. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Do, um, okay, so do our characters... So we can just start from the top then, yeah. Yes. Do our characters slash civilization still live here? If not, who lives here now, and does anyone? No, I think there's no change there. Nothing's yeah, changed no, there. I, I think, think everybody still yeah. lives here. Yeah, I agree. What does the place physically look like now? Has anything visually changed? How does it smell now? How does it feel here? I think it feels um, less cold. I think also the introduction of surface plants has introduced the smell of pollen back into mm -hmm. the air. Yeah. I yeah. think for sure that like green plant smell and like pollen is definitely mm -hmm. like, it's especially fragrant over there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but like it's, it's something you are not expecting down here. You're not expecting yeah. surface so, smells from this area ever. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, I think uh, at this point, a city like has, I mean, it's not fully formed yet, but it's definitely begun to form and establish. And I think because of this, like you had said, the pollen kind of thing is like a big thing because it's such a small area where farms and stuff can be. So I would imagine like there's a rich, rich district that's kind of like formed right around the farm because mm -hmm. you're close enough that you get to see bees and there's enough light where you can grow mm -hmm. flowers and stuff. But then like mm -hmm. as you get away from that light source, that's mm -hmm. when you get more of the like the not poorer, but like not the like the elite. Desperate. I think I don't even think that. I think it's like the true sort of like where the humble beginnings in a way. Cause like mm -hmm. yeah. just because that's the rich area doesn't mean it's as established as these outer yeah. ring. Areas I think it's would safe be, to say in the first two years it hasn't completely divulged into classism. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I think we <laughs> had I think I think we probably are on our way there, but yeah, not quite yeah. yet. That's I cool. think, but I do think you are right. I think there are big contingencies of like maybe like guard encampments now mm -hmm. near the farm, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. bigger clustered tents and like more like you can see resources being allocated where they're being out. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the greater group well, of people. Well, like the farmers are kings in this environment right now because mm -hmm. like they are the <sighs> primary time, source dude. of stable. Food. And I think, <laughs> I think since a couple years passed, I think not a lot, but I mm -hmm. think there is one animal on that farm we it is it is hey. not a surface animal can't stress True. that enough it's not a yeah. surface animal but they're trying something with this animal that they mm. got from one of the lower levels to mm. try and domesticate or turn it into a meat <laughs> product thing yeah mm. i think so, that that is something that definitely would be seen so question then next question mm -hmm. yes now that we live here do we still call mm. it the never ending darkness. Yeah, yeah. I kind of talked about that a little bit yeah. earlier. We did just well, on the idea of I it think being... the town has a name now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think I actually but like it, the idea but it says of the, the place. I think the place is the underground, right? Yeah, we're well, we're not the, talking about so much as town has been established yeah. yet. Because there is ways to establish towns through like yes. the card poles. But I think do they still refer to that as like because like they didn't call the surface oh. the surface, they called the yeah. surface Celeterra. Yeah. yeah, which is like I'll that's... say I'll say actually after only two years I I'll, I'd actually say that they still call it the same thing. Yeah, um, I don't know if the they never would change. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not yet anyway. Okay, yeah, cool. Not okay. yet. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Three. Three. Yeah. Is that our first three? I, I think don't. So, yes. I'm not. Maybe. Yes, yes, it is. What do people listen to and perform here? That's fun. What is considered folk art? Oh, I love so that. That is so cool. That's I such a good question. That. I like that a lot. That's a very, I think a culture of it comes now. I think it's like, ooh, I think I know what it is. And, and like, obviously I'm not going to ruin anyone's ears with this in like an audio format, but like, Thank I you. think music has changed because of them being in these sort of chambers and these like t caves mm -hmm. and tunnels. I think people do sort of like these like different, like echo sort of like sounds like they use the sort of like ambience of the cave and like bouncing off of walls to mm. make these new oh, this new cool. sort of type of music it's not it doesn't sound yeah, like I a song that. per se like yeah. some people perform with whistling some people perform with claps some people mm -hmm. perform with like percussion instruments and wind woods mm -hmm. but like 
they're using it to play off of the nature of how the cave sounds. It almost sounds mm-hmm. like the ambience has been heightened in the way that they play. And like, mm-hmm. like they're giving sort of like music to the, the world around them when they play these yeah. instruments. And like, I love that. And I think like, that's a way one for people to sort of like communicate from long distance, mm-hmm. but also it's like a, just a shared sort yeah. of like, you're not alone if you hear someone you, doing that. Like yeah. if you can hear someone yeah. Yeah. ham boning in like a cave corner just for this <laughs> cool echo, yeah. you know that dude's getting down and you feel like inspired and safe, you know, like, like something mm-hmm. about it just like gives you like a feeling of like, Oh, thank God. Even if I can't see in the dark right now, I know there's yeah. someone here that's like vibing. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. love that. I'd also like to imagine uh, that like there's uh, like the hand, the hand uh, gestures with like the light. What was what that called? Uh, <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. You're absolutely yeah. correct. Puppets. People put people put bioluminescent fungus on the tips of their mm-hmm. finger, and they do oh. different like light oh, dances. Oh, I, yes, yes, that. I was yeah. also thinking like the finger hand. Puppets? Like, he was he was being a dumbass. Like, uh, he was shadow thinking puppets? of shadow puppets. Shadow puppets. Any yes. sort of like I think that kind of charades vibe just devolved mm-hmm. into sort of like, mm-hmm. just like performance art in a way then. All right. Ace, second ace. It's time to plant the seedlings. What are the seedlings? Where are they planted? What is the harvest that is hoped for? So we already touched on this. I'm going to look at they've... the, I'm going to look at the focus situations real quick and see if I want to do one mm-hmm. of those. So I'm going to tell a story. Ooh. So the way this so the so the way this works is we all are going to I'm going to introduce a story we're all going to adopt a character in this story and we are going to play out a, an individual scene. Um, okay. So uh, the scene we are going to play out I am going to play Patrick Stump. <laughs> yes. So the first of our pieces of corn came actually like not do you call it bloomed uh the first sure. ear of corn bloomed successfully mm-hmm. and is edible we are going to play out an interview scene i am uh i am being interviewed by you three reporters you can uh mm-hmm. ask questions or uh something like that we're going to pretend that i'm like on a stand being uh taking questions from the public okay uh, and I expect each of you to come up with your name and what n- publication you're coming from. Alone in the sea of reporters and cameras going <laughs> off, you see a sign with a with a, a crudely drawn stake and an X over the side of it. And the stake looks a little like foreign and weird. It's got like, okay. maybe some polka dots on it. And there's a protester that budges his way to the front. And he's like, you're bringing all these surface plants down here. You're messing with the environment. And I know about the rumors of you trying to farm lower level meats. You're going to bring predators to our doorstep. You're messing with the environment. What do you have to say for yourself, you dirty money grubbing surface dweller? And you can see now he rips his mask off. It's a young boogling boy. A boogling boy. <laughs> oh wow! L- l- oh, listen, listen, little boogling boy. This, this is a, <laughs> this is a, a whole, a holistic place. We're just trying to provide for our people. I'm trying to provide for my family. You've got a family, I'd understand. A pox and on your whole hive, man. I, and he spits I'm... on the ground and runs off. <laughs> listen, people. I am not doing any shady dealings. I am just planting some corn for my people, my friends, my family. You know what? Even for the people I don't know, if we haven't met, I'm doing this for you too. I want our civilization to thrive. I want some good old fashioned corn, some good old fashioned sustainable. My people sustainable. were fine living down here subsisting no, you on ran fungus off. You before get out of here. you showed up. You ran up. off. You ran off. Before you showed up with your fancy <laughs> meat trucks and your corn. Next question. <laughs> Uh, Heagle Deagle Beagle Express. Uh, <laughs> I was just wondering if uh, you could answer. Uh, I don't know much about uh, corn growing uh, on account of I'm a reporter. Uh, I you were going to say on account like, of I'm a beagle. <laughs> on account of I'm a talking beagle uh, brought God. to life through strange magics. Uh, how are you going to fix the soil because like we can't rotate crops we don't got the right crops for it 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 don't seem very sustainable to me can you speak to that well i'm I'm gonna be honest this is the first year of corn we've been able to successfully grow um i i can't really speak into sustainability i can't speak into 
what that's going to look like. All I can speak into is right now we've got some sort of light at the end of this tunnel. We've grown a little bit of corn. Things are looking good. Uh, once we need to figure out how to uh, keep our soil going, whatever that looks like, we're going to figure it out. I can assure you we're going to figure something out. But right now, it's time for celebrating. Um, Tony Storm here from the Stalactite. Um, when do you uh, project that you'll be able to uh, provide corn for the masses? Um, obviously, this is a great breakthrough for you um, and for, you know, civilization. Um I just want to, I would just like to know, uh, uh, do you have a projected timetable for, for more corn for our people? Well, right now we are, uh, sending the corn off to the lab to get it tested. We're running some tests just to make sure it's all completely safe. This is, you know, we've been here for a few years, but this is still some new territory. We want to make sure the, the soil is not toxic and all that sort of stuff. But once we get all that confirmed, then, uh, I'm hoping within the next year we can start mass producing and getting it out to the people and uh, getting it out to everyone who needs it. Thank you, Mr. Stump. And world hunger. Peace. And Patrick Stump walks <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was great. I loved all of that. All right. Ooh, another three. Second three. Second three. What do people in our place argue about for fun, whether at the bar, in the square, or in other social spaces. I actually think I might pass on this one. Okay. Just because okay. I don't, I feel like they wouldn't, at this early stage, they wouldn't really argue about much for fun because they're all still very sad. That makes sense. I think, yeah, and a little sensitive. Yeah. Tensions are definitely high right now and yeah. the never ending darkness. Only like, this is mm. only at best like three years after a huge calamity. Yeah. Yep, yep, mm. yep, yep, yep. We are still in fight or flight mode. Okay, maybe you guys can actually help me. Okay. Uh, so I've decided I want this to, uh, I want the party to be, I want this to be the day of the yearly tradition where we remember like where we, uh, like the marble statue is very involved, but it's the day that like we came down and like the apocalypse happened. Yeah. But I don't want it to be like a sad event. I want it to be an event that celebrates the traditions and like kind of so like i like the idea of like this day like the streets have like uh like have food carts and stuff all over the place yeah. and it's got like different theme like basically it's the day instead of mourning um the people and things they've lost they actually celebrate what they were able to save and you know pay homage to the traditions of the past so it's like this huge festival thing where like people set up carts of like traditional uh meals yeah. or games and like what about uh yes. the day of descent the day of descent mm. is not bad because you can kind of pull that both with ancestors and literally we descended into the ground oh that's actually yeah. very clever mm -hmm. that's you're really a good. smart man okay so then i'll say this is i think it's by the that white marble statue and like all around it are food carts and stuff. So we're just people that are in this huge like food cart area. I am a random teen with my teen friends uh, enjoying the festival. And mm -hmm. it's like, hey guys, have you tried the Google gob? It's delicious. The orc <laughs> over there is selling it. That's so good. Can I please tag in? Because the character I was yeah. literally making is Yeah, I mean, yes, I, I'm talking There's a to dude, you. <laughs> There's just this jacked like, all the orcs in my world look like pigs. I'm just letting it be known right now. If you're cool. making an orc, you're a okay. pig man. Uh, I like it. Okay. There's this jacked mm -hmm. pig dude standing over like this makeshift stone grill. And he's got mm -hmm. like slabs of meat. And oh, the he's thing got he's meat talking, here? Yeah, no, I know. But it's like not big, oh, huge no, chunks is... of meat, right? Like it's like a special occasion. Yeah. Like this is like something from his own yes. personal like, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. no. And like he's been cooking it up. And it's something you you see he's covered in scars. You can't quite tell how mm -hmm. old or new they are or whatever. But like he just kind of gives the kid a thumbs up as he flips this big sort of like Google looks like a tail, steak? like a slab of a tail steak. Yeah. Of whatever mm -hmm. this. I forget what you said. The gobble mm -hmm. goob. Yeah. Gobble. The goob. opposite. Yeah. Google gob. This is a Google, Google gob, gob steak. Yeah. He put <laughs> yes. on a new one because the kid got the last of the gobble goob. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a Google gopter. And he's oh, picking up a Google Gopter tail just right across this grill. He gives the kid a thumbs up as he's like slicing like chunks of this off and just passing out small portions to everybody who comes up to the stand. He's not taking any money. He's just like smiling and kind of like 
Yeah. He's just, fuck it, we're, we need something right now. And he yeah, feels no. like he understands that and is just happy to oblige. And he's just kind of... <laughs> I think an uh I think an an older lady uh walks by, her hands are uh her hands are super dirty. She's carrying a cloth, and she you uh I think you go to hand her a piece of steak, and she's like, oh, I'll 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 be right back. I I definitely want some. That smells delicious. But I just uh spent my turn cleaning the cleaning the uh the remembrance. He just slaps it into that whatever that cloth thing she's carrying, he just slaps a way too big slab of this meat into it. He doesn't even finish <laughs> listening to her. He just smiles again. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> he just okay. gives a thumbs up. What is he an anime then, character? <laughs> I wonder if he just doesn't speak common like he only speaks orc. And that's you, what's going you're on. getting the sneaking suspicion that that might be mm-hmm. accurate. <laughs> Jeremy, I'll be one of the the teens in your group. Yeah. Um um, yeah, I know it's, uh, I asked them to make mine a little spicy and, um, it was really good. Um, do you think it would give us more? Is that, is, is, is that something we can do or? I mean, it's something we can do, but you know, the whole point of this festival is to go around and like enjoy all the peoples, right? His I mean, cheerful smile goes away and he slowly walks over to you. Everyone gets one. <laughs> and then walks back to his grill and just <laughs> gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mister. <laughs> I thought he didn't. I don't. I thought he didn't speak common. Now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. You just see him giving someone else a thumbs up and like clapping their back with his massive hands. Like he's just a big jolly guy. So that was like mm. really out of character for him to just walk over in a very calm <laughs> tone and uh-huh. just say everybody oh, gets one. Matt. All right, Matt. Oh shit, that's me. Damn, another, another three. three. That's our third shit. three. All right. Almost out of Third threes. three. A new style fad Ooh. or devotion sweeps our place. What is it? Who cares about That's it? That's fun. Um, <laughs> Matt, do you care? Who cares about it? Yeah, who cares? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I don't even care. I really don't. I think um, stylistically, like clothing wise, like not much has changed. Maybe like they're trying to, you know, bundle up a little bit. Cause I mean, it's subterranean. So like, it's kind of cold down there, you know, so they're trying to stay warm. I don't think that there's any like new, like fads or anything. I think people are still just trying to recover. Is it more, um, would you say instead of it less being flashy, is it more like people are dressing for what they're having to do in the society? Oh now? yeah. So it's very oh, utilitarian. Yeah. It's, it's, very. Yeah. yeah everyone's it's, very practical. Okay. Uh, very practical, very, very practical uh, uh, clothing. So that's a little bit different. Whereas like uh, on the surface, maybe people would, you know, occasionally yeah. dress up more showy. Um, I think, I think um, uh, you kind of have like two outfits essentially. Like you have, you have two sets of clothes. Like your work and clothes like, and then your not work clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your sleep clothes and your work clothes. And that's it. Like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, especially only being, like, two years mm-hmm. in. People are just working and going to sleep. The mm-hmm. only time they've had <laughs> off is for the party. <laughs> yeah. And people yeah, exactly. love it. At that party, by the way, people were confused about what clothing they should wear, whether it's their work clothes or their sleep clothes. <laughs> there was a little bit of confusion there. <laughs> Could it be a mass pajama party? Why not? <laughs> Kyle, what you got? All righty, then I'm going ahead and pull it on. Four of diamonds. Is that our first four? No, it's first. What is the primary building or natural material of our place? So, yeah, a lot of stone, a lot of metal we've already established. I think also, Mm -hmm. like, uh, some people, it's not super, like, it's not frowned upon because, like, it's dire straits right now. But I think some people are cutting a few of the the fungal trees in the underwood down. And they've yeah. been using sort of like a fungal, like really spongy sort of wood-like material that's like softer than wood and a little lighter than wood, mm-hmm. but it still kind of mm-hmm. has the same sort of properties of wood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't have to survive the elements. Yeah. And it seems to like... stay moist. So it's not quite like a, it's not a material that's going to dry rot or like burn yeah. really easily. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like they're leaning towards using that in like some of the like uh, more like delicate mm-hmm. building situation yeah houses made of pool noodles yeah exactly yeah think like a really uh, like like a like a 10 times sturdier pool noodle like absolutely that yeah. same texture yeah. though but like, like big that. rounds and like they'll shave them down and use them for different like delicate work that stone wouldn't necessarily fit for you know and then like i, like I think that. there's probably like some crystal as well like built into things like crystal glasses and like daggers mm-hmm. and things like i think that's all kind of a 
kind of a given. All right, Tai Tai? Seven. That is our second seven. Invent a specific street, building, corner, overlook, or meeting place. What is it called officially, and what do locals call it? I love this. The good old kissing rock. The <laughs> kissing rock of, of the never-ending darkness. So what we've got is the uh, what what is colloquially called the stink hole. Yes! Oh. Thank you, Tyler. You've given me this gift this day. Please um, describe in, very, yes. in, in great detail what the stink hole is. What the stink hole is, is it's right on the edge of town, and it is basically... <laughs> It, this, the stink hole is literally, <laughs> if you've ever wondered what an underground society does with all the fecal matter in oh, urine. Oh no! It is it's the like, poop house. It is, it is a giant pit that they found that is sim- essentially they drop all of the uh, leavings, but they also throw like all of the like excess trash and things like that. They just found what is essentially a never ending pit. What they, fa- what oh. they assume to be a never ending pit. Yeah. Boogie is fuming. <laughs> this is already the worst, and it's only been three years. <laughs> Look, these these humans or these people literally destroyed the earth with the. They didn't do they anything. The, the humans in- did it, and they're gone now. They're just following in their footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair. They didn't know what to do with it. Oh, but no, but Why I like it. I don't think it's like as crops and stuff. I don't think it's as terrible. I feel like they might find a like weird like survival ass way of repurposing their shit the as thing fertilizer. Is, and the yeah. the Maybe, thing is, but it's been two it, years. yes, the thing is, it's not super envi- environmentally conscious. But literally, what else are they gonna fucking do? <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, they, they like launch they it live... into the sun so those lasers destroy their poop. Yeah, they they literally. Are, are dropping all their shoot. poop down into a chute with uh, the kids call it the poop chute definitely that's, that's so why good. that that's why that elder god was angry because they dropped all their shit on him <laughs> all right so jeremy oh fuck yeah. that's funny okay. shit uh oh, yeah. 10. Uh, oh, 10. Ooh, that's a new it. cycle is the year of years. Okay, so the there is a great loss one that sets new burdens on the inhabitants of our place. How do they cope and what have they lost forever? Okay. Ooh. I like it. So uh, I think the Blue Glens are fucking fed up with the these new inhabitants. They're chopping down this the, the mushroom forest that is like the m- most beautiful thing down here. Mm-hmm. They're destroying it to build houses. They, they are throwing all of their garbage and stuff into this huge pit and they have no effing idea where it goes. Um, and like, neither do the Booglins because like they don't have everything fully mapped out, but basically like these people have, after they destroyed the surface, they are now coming in and immediately destroying the underground. (laughs) Um, so the Booglins, um, with my understanding of them, I feel like they are definitely more, they try to be more pacifist because they don't want to get in wars and stuff. No. But basically what they start doing is they basically use their mushroom and moss to make like certain passageways basically untraversable. Mm. Like they build these walls. And so the thing that has been lost is a lot of the tunnels leading out of this area have been completely sealed up by the Booglins. Oh, um, wow. And like they have Booglins who are actively like, like I said, the Booglins don't like try to harm anyone, but they have like different kinds of magic, like sleep spores and that kind of stuff to basically peacefully make it to where this new, the surface dwellers cannot go to certain mm-hmm. regions or like out of certain regions. Okay. And so, so then are there any specific things you have in mind that are cut off? Like we have no, we no like longer so have the, access to... The, the main the thing forest. that we've lost access to is is the forest. Okay, uh, and yeah. that's not to say that there isn't a way to the yeah, forest. Yeah, lost easy access. But the, there might be multiple entrances to the forest. But at the very least, uh, the civilization has lost its routes that it was using for all these supplies because the mm. Booglins have blocked them. And it's possible the Booglins have blocked passageways they haven't found yet. They don't know. Okay, so they they might have lost that access to that forest forever. Or they might be able to find a new passage, but at least for right now, they have 
been cut off from a huge uh, pool of resources. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that uh, a lot. Yeah. Roll the I dice. Think you roll now. Yes. Four. Four years. Ooh, four year time skip. Okay. So there, are, that means there were four years where they lost access to this. Yeah. Like a lot of these few supplies mm-hmm. they were able to. Um, okay, so this poses a very good first question. Mm-hmm. Resulting from that, do our characters and do the, does this civilization move, or do certain people decide to move into a new area because of that? Because that very much so could cause mm-hmm. people to need to find new. I think if I could, if this is a group thing, right? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it is. Throwing yeah. my idea here, I think that this would cause some people to be like, I mean. We're screwed if we go to the surface, and we're kind of screwed if we go to these lower layers, but the Booglin won't be down there. So some idiots, yeah. or even some brave of heart people, start moving yeah. to the lower layers where it's more dangerous. I kind of okay. like that some okay. people start trying to explore the lower layers. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. we don't know, like, nobody on the surface who's like a pure surface dweller is going to yeah. know, but like, adventurers I think we don't and know stuff with your stories... And things may be, yeah. but there's so no... So how about we just... How about we just say, like, the town is still there, yeah. but there yeah. was a huge exodus. One, because of yeah. the huge lack... Like, all of a sudden, the supply, like, mm. dropped significantly. Uh, and two, because, like, as far as they can tell, the Booglins have cut off a lot of their access to the higher level yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And so they feel forced to go. So I like the idea of just, like, a huge chunk of the entire population just... yeah. Mm -hmm. exoduses maybe not all like to the same like they spread out like it's a bunch of smaller groups that have kind of ventured out uh what does the place physically look like now uh has anything visually changed how does it smell now how does it feel here um i think it smells a lot better (laughs) i don't know i kind of think it's starting to smell a little worse worse. i think it's starting to smell worse it smells I think it's a little stranger. I think there's new, different molds that aren't good that are starting to grow because of the filth. I think yeah. there are new plants starting to grow because of the pollen and probably new pollinators mm. moving shit around and probably cross-pollinating with stuff that's down yeah. here now. So there's like new, yeah. weird plants growing. Mm. Some of them are edible. Uh, Some edible things are now poisonous and they look fairly similar. So it makes things a little more like they're back at square one, basically with foraging now because of this, yeah. like the yeah. only, the yeah. only certainty they have is the farm's food, which is yeah. a double edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. And I, now, um, I definitely think as far as smell, like, because the, the, the Booglin sealed off all those passageways, like the filth that they put in that giant pit, the odor has nowhere else to go. It's just yeah. sitting in here. So I do think like there's this just gross odor. I definitely feel like there's a lot of like huge sections of this um, emerging town are now just kind of abandoned just because people mm-hmm. left. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. so many people left that there's just sections of it that were once like beginning to thrive and now it, they've gone mm-hmm. silent. I think in a lot of those exited spots is where you're seeing the new molds pop up and stuff where it's like, yeah. it's not uninhabitable, mm-hmm. but like, People who are still there, the very few people who are there are kind of sick. They're not yeah. doing too hot. They don't really have other yeah. people around. I think the place still goes by the same name, right? Yeah. The Never Ending oh, Darkness. I've been shortening it to yeah. Ned. So if we want to ca- start calling it Ned, that'd be cool. Ned. <laughs> Venture into Ned. Venture that feels gross. Ned. I don't like that. It feels gross. Go, to into, say. go deeper within Ned's layers. Yeah, mm. Nope. Don't like it. Don't like Ned it. Ned would like you to come to the Explore, explore Ned's caverns. Explore Ned's lower caverns. If you want to learn more about Ned, or even if you just want to hear more about this wacky underground world, tune in next week to the Summer of Wonderful for part two. Help, I've fallen into the stink hole and I can't get up. My life alert doesn't work this far underground.